Hey yo, it's your boy Los. Let's get it. The gospel got me so good. I call it super straight. Was fame till he came. I know that you relate. Was dead to him, but led to him. He rejuvenated. So can't believe he called me up to get elevated. Alright, first I want to apologize for the way this may look. I'm gonna see if I can fix it in the filter so you might not see this. So this actually this apology may be not in voice. It's the fact that I'm trying to fix it. Point is, if by chance I can't fix it and see this the way it looks, it looks all foggy and missy eyed, my bad. Not sure what's on my phone, I need to get new new ones. Anyways, let's get to it. <laughs> so uh talking this afternoon, rainy, rainy afternoon about Tadashi's latest album called Never Fold. Now, real quick, <coughs> those that know me know that I usually when I do my reviews, I usually uh start off um, I usually take a day or two listening to them. Um, usually because my schedule is so cramped, I don't have much time to really sit down and devote, you know, uh, uh, a lot of time to the album um, at one time. But um, <laughs> my schedule has definitely lightened itself as of late. And so I was at work last night. It dropped at midnight, and I just heard that bad boy literally all night. Went to the gym right after that. Heard it then. So I've just really had a chance to really, really sit with this album for a while. And so that's why this review is coming literally a day after the album dropped because I have spent time with it though. But um, it's a Tadashi latest album called Never Fold off of Reach Records. Uh, Reach Reach Records. Tadashi, if you don't know who Tadashi is, man, you man, you, I don't know what's wrong with you. He's one of the founding member, members of uh, Reach Records. Um, he, we first heard Tadashi, same time we heard Lecrae really off um, Real Talk album, drop off Cross Movements label. Um, Tadashi was, man, he's just a beast. <laughs> he's a problem, man. And we've heard him all throughout, you know, everything Reach did. And then he dropped his first album, uh, Kingdom People. I think that was in 94, 94, 95, something like that. Like, he's been around for a minute. He's been he's been killing the game literally for a minute. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a fan. Can't lie, I'm a more of a fan of the old Kingdom People uh, Tadashi. Uh, you know what I'm saying? More, I think Keen of People to me was his, his, my favorite album. Um, uh, you know, that's just my personal opinion, only because it was really packed with theology. And it seemed, no disrespect, no shots, but it seemed um, there was not a fear to um, say the name of Jesus, say God's name, the Lord's name, uh, to give him praise, give him glory. There seemed to be more of a fear as of late, but, you know, we'll get to that in a little bit. But um, I never forget when um, I heard that album or actually this first song was um houston we have a problem um or this is just problem or is it houston had a problem what well, that one song there um i was in fairbanks alaska coming down the stairs this is back when <laughs> the internet was extremely terrible um i went to i was always on reachreppers.com um you know checking things out or reach life whatever at the time and i uh yeah, just went on went online and I and I saw it. Okay, and I remember uh, hit play and I went upstairs to uh, you know get finished getting dressed for work and I had my speakers on and then it, bum, 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 we have a problem. Man, I just my whole well, I think I almost got evicted from that bad boy. It was bad like that. That mess knocked and I was like, woof. Went and ran downstairs quickly and turned it down because it was it was hitting. But uh, he just came with it, man, on that album. I just really enjoyed him. He actually quickly became my favorite. Uh, MC off reach records um, just just a dope dope uh, MC uh, and then you know he dropped a few more albums and everything and um, you know futures with them so on and so forth but sadly enough it's extremely sad in 09 um, he uh, him and his wife lost their son um, very sad day for him very sad day in, in general but it was a very sad day for him uh, him and his family he took it extremely hard and I think that that's when we started to see a shifting in his um his, not, I don't say his theology, but I say a, definitely a shifting in um, how he saw music. I'm gonna say that, and so um, that's where we have what we have now with, with Tadashi, where he's concerned. But I met Tadashi a couple of times, actually, a few times, actually. Um, one time in particular, um, him and uh, Tada him and Triple E was doing their video in, in Atlanta. Um, I was in the video for a quick second. My sister was in it way more than me. A little jealous, no plan. But uh, first time meeting Tadashi, man, just a, just a lively guy, friendly guy. Uh, we were sitting down eating right at the, right before we started to shoot on the video. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, he's from Houston, so we're in Atlanta. And he had never heard of the term uh, no homo, right? And so 
<laughs> at least he said he said he never heard. Of it. I don't know, but basically we're sitting there at the picnic table and we're talking about whatever, whatever. And somehow that came up. He says so. Basically, if I say no homo before doing something, that just means that you guys can't take it gay. And we was like, well, yeah. And so he starts rubbing my back of my dude's ear. He goes, so if I'm doing this, right? <laughs> It was funny, man. I'm sorry. He said, but if I, so if I'm doing this right, and I just say no homo, that's okay, right? Man, we cry laughing. Man. It was just funny, man. He was just a, a very lively guy, man. And um, I remember asking him, you're like, yo, man, how you, how do you guys stay so humble, man? I was like, you know, you guys are killing it. How you stay so humble? And he said, real talk, let me show you real quick. And um, this guy would come out the subway, and he's like, hey, man, come here real quick. And the guy came out. He's like, hey, 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 uh, you heard of uh, uh, Ti? He's like, yeah, man, Ti is dope, man. Go pay. Yo, you heard of uh, Ludacris? Oh, yeah, man, Ludacris is dope, man, dope, man. He goes, yeah, man, you heard of uh, Jay-Z? He goes, oh, man, I love Jay-Z. He said, hey, what about uh, Lecrae? And the guy said, "La what? He goes, Lecrae. He said, ah, man, I heard him. He goes, well, what about Tadashi? He said, to, to, to what? He said, oh, okay, all right, bro, yo, you have a good day, man. The dude walked away. He said, see, man, don't nobody know us. <laughs> he said, don't nobody know who we are. He said, but he goes, and Tadashi said something that I've always loved about him, and I pray that this is the same mindset. He said, um... My wife and I pray, he goes, even though we're going to make a little bit of money, things are going well. He said, my wife and I pray that the Lord keeps us in a position where every week we depend on him to pay our bills. He, he, he said he, they never wanted to get, you know, up here and mindset up here and they forget God or, or they got more money than, than, than you know, actually he, their money is more important than God. He said, we always want to stay in a position where um, we, we depend on God to take care of us. And I love that. Uh, I met him again in 09, which is sadly enough the same, short, around the same time when his son passed. Um, and I remember this, this thing, I've never told anybody this story. We was in Atlanta <coughs> um, at the conference center. It was just performing, um, this, it was the, I think it was the, the, the rehab, or no, the, the rebel tour, sorry. Um, he, him and his wife was there, and she was just very pregnant. And I was talking to him, and she walked up, and she kind of put her arm on his, her hand on his shoulder, and she said, ooh. And she grabbed her stomach, and he stopped me in mid-conversation. I, I've always respected this about him. I mean, I think any father would do this, any husband would do this, but I just love this about him. And I was in mid-conversation. And those who know me, as you can tell, six minutes in, I'm very winded. And I'm talking, talking, talking. He's talking, talking, talking. And he just stopped. Like, oh, what's up, baby? And he just pulled to the side real quick and made sure she was cool. And I love that about him, sadly enough. Um, you know, shortly after, things didn't go well. But, uh... Or things didn't, you know, end well, sorry. Um, but yeah, I just remember that. Just, just, just a lot of respect for the man. So anyway, I'm sorry, took so long with this intro. Um, basically, just wanted to get you uh, up to up to, up to to par as who Tadashi is and how much, in a lot of ways, he means to me. I just have a lot of respect for Tadashi. Um, this album here, although isn't his best album, I think it's a good album, though. I am I am a fan of this album for a number of reasons. And also, I'm a, I'm a, I have some things against it, but for the most part, I'm a fan of this album. The album before this, uh, Par I think it's Paradise Broken or something along the lines like that, uh, was basically in a lot of ways dedicated to his son when that passed away. Um, Paradise Lost. I think it's Paradise Lost. Anyways, um, dedicated. It's, that wasn't dedicated more so, but it was more so um, explaining where his heart was at and how in much in pain he was dealing with the loss and how, how it took a toll on him, right? And so this album here, I think, is really a part two to that. Now, on the first album, the Paradise one, I felt as if he was still really, really dealing with it and it was still heavy on his heart and just um, he just you know, couldn't move forward and whatever, because every song, pretty much every song was about that situation and it was, was, was pretty much about him losing hope um, um not sure how tomorrow is going to end the whole nine like he like i see him i saw him crying a whole lot um on that album but this one here seems to be a little more of a release he seemed to be look it's been 10 years so he seemed to be a little like he can take steps now like he's he's getting better things make a little bit more sense to him now and i love it i love the progression i love seeing as a father of two um i, I couldn't imagine losing you know saying a, a child uh, but I love seeing the fact that although he was he's still hurting from the situation, I can see the hand of God um, through his music, um, coaching him and, 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 and caressing him and reminding him of the beauty of who Christ is and, and working him through everything. Now, I'm not going to lie. As usual, this album is not a um, overly Christ centered album. It's not, you know, there's you're not going to get be straight with you. You're not going to get a lot of deep, deep theology from this album. You're not. If you're coming to this album looking for like a sermon net or you come to this album looking for. Even the mention, I think Christ's name was mentioned once, and uh, Lord and God is mentioned, but for his Christ's name, I think it was only mentioned once in the album. Um, so you're, if you're coming to this album for that, you're not going to get that. I'm going to say this. There's no disrespect, but it is. It's going to sound disrespectful, but it's how I view it more. This album, to me, 
is 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 it's the kind of album that I think oh, it's gonna sound bad, but it's the kind of album I think that Joe Osteen could listen to and be comfortable with, right? That sounds bad, but it's the truth. I, I feel like um, he was real. Um, there's a lot of a lot of songs on here are, hey, you're gonna be okay. Um, things are bad, but they're looking up. Um, you know, it's the smile. Uh, I don't know, um, it's not as rough as you think it is, and 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 you're gonna make it. And you know, just a lot of a lot of stuff like that. A lot of a lot of pep talky kind of kind of kind of songs and lyrics and things like that. And, and I can see this being on the tour. I can see this being the very last. He he being the very last artist or before the prayer or whoever, whatever. But you know how like you um, you play the slow songs <laughs> at the end of the at the end of the uh, the sermon or whatever, um, just to get the crowd you know ready in, in a place of worship per se. And I feel like this album is more so about that is more um just just encouraging you i guess um to hold on now i think for the believer this album does a great job of encouraging us to remember christ um remember the gospel um to to stay focused on on the beauty of who christ is to not look at our circumstances or situations but to look at christ as our our healer as our, our deliverer to look at christ as the one and only person who can who can who can get us through where we are um but i think for the unbeliever um i don't think it draws them to christ i don't think it draws them away from christ but it just comes to, i think if i was an unbeliever and i heard this album i would just say this is just a a, a dope um peaceful um man i'm trying to just, just, just a, a, it's a dope album, a good album, great album, um, but it's not, it's not going to lead, indiv I don't think it's going to lead individuals, unbelievers per se, um, to know, want to know more of the beauty of who Christ is. That's where I'm, I'm at with it. I don't think it's, and I don't, I've said before and I'll continue to say, I don't think every Christian that raps or Christian artist, whatever, needs to do a, you know, have a three part sermon yet. You know, um, album. I don't think that has, has to be done, um, but I do think on albums like this here, where the topics is about getting better, doing better, smiling again, looking happier, whatever, whatever, um, and rejoicing in, in tough times. I do think it's extremely important for us to point people to the cross. Um, I, I, I think I think you can you can weave through it to see. Uh, a person's need for the cross on this album, but I don't think it's it's blatant out, boom, in your face on every song. You know, seek Christ, seek Jesus for your freedom, for your peace. I don't think that's done um, on this album as, as as much as I think it should be because you're talking to a generation of individuals who may be just suffering um, with unacceptance or not being accepted and suffering with, you know, depression and whatever, whatever. And it's kind of like NF. And if, I did a review on NF's album before, and I just feel like, you know, NF, although dope MC, um, just does music that leaves you with no hope. Sorry. Uh, and I kind of feel like, although this album kind of gives you hope because it talks about God, but as far as pointing you to Christ and salvation and repenting of sins and, and leaning on the Lord um, in that manner, it doesn't, this album doesn't do that. And I think it should. But nevertheless, outside of all that, I think it's a dope album. My wife laughs and she says, it reminds her of Cardi B in a lot of ways because a lot of his style is Cardi B-ish, <laughs> I guess we would say. And so uh, it definitely has, you know, uh, 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 you know, smidges of a Cardi B in it, the way he, the way he raps and everything. But for the most part, um, I think it's dope. Trip Lee's on the album, Lecrae's on the album. Lecrae sounds completely different, by the way. I'm going to be straight with you. Um, he kind of bragged a little bit about, you know, the kind of rims he got, which is kind of a little different from, from what I expect from Lecrae. But nevertheless, though, he's on the album. Trip's on the album, Lecrae's on the album. Uh, 1K Pew is on the album um, very quickly, and I really, I was really, I'm not a big, huge 1K Pew, 1K Pew fan, right? But I was, for some odd reason, I was like, yo, I want to hear his verse. I was really anticipating um, a long, a dope long verse, and it was really short. And he kind of jumped in, jumped out. Even if he just did, did the chorus, it would have been cool. But he didn't, he didn't do that. Um, a couple, there's a bunch of people singing on the album, a bunch of uh, singers. Um, who else is on there? Adam, uh, Andy Minio's not on the album. KB's not on the album. Show ain't on the album. Although Show's not reached, it's still cool. He's not on the album. Uh, there's a bunch of people who are not on the album that I would expect to be on the album. But um, it's, it's really just, like I said, it's really just Tadashi. He really, he just um, venting and just uh, basically just, I think he, I think this album, I think he did this album really for himself. And then it was like, well, yeah, I might as well just put it out because I think this is a lot of album that he can go back to and listen to and just be encouraged in the Lord. Um, well, yeah, because he's a believer, he knows what he's talking about and what's going on. But be encouraged about how things are and how things are going. And so I, I, I actually give this a thumbs up. I, I really, and I personally enjoy this album as a believer. I can, 
like I said, weave through what's being said and understand the beauty of who Christ is. Understand that my hope is in Christ and not in Christ alone, and not in my accomplishments or not in anything dealing with me, but solely in the beauty of who the Lord is. And I like that. Um, uh, I, there's a there's, okay, so he's from Texas, right? So there's a song called Water, and I think if I was from Texas, right, I would go looking for him and, and have to. If I was if I was DJ Screw. I would have my, if he was still alive, my peoples would have to go find him, have to, have to stomp uh, Tadashi out. Tadashi, uh, he, he jacked up the whole chop and screw thing with that song there. He tried to do it. It was just very bad. Um, Primo um, passed away a few years back, and he's actually, he was the Christian version of DJ Screw. Is it, I think it's Primo. I think I'm saying that right. I always mess that name up. But um, he was a Christian version of DJ's Crew, and um, he did actually a 116 compilation album. It's uh, Chop and Screw. Go check that album out. It was a dope album way, way, way back when. But he did the the uh, Chopper Screw version of that. And uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe he can't find anybody else to do it. But uh, this was this was a terrible rendition of Chopper Screw. Terrible. <laughs> terrible. Uh, and there's a song in here called Splash 2, which is one with one KP on it. Um, I didn't I didn't get that song. I felt, here, here's the thing, right? I felt like if he had his way, he's also singing on his album. If you remember, he dropped a little one. A uh, little snub, something a couple, maybe a couple years back, like six songs of him singing, and it just, no. Um, not saying he can't sing, just, no. Um, <laughs> uh, I, but I felt like this album here for him was just, like I said, just, just therapeutic. And I felt like if he had his way, he would just do every song on the ground. Like, I bet in a concert, you know, he'll probably, and I'm not no disrespect, but I can see him on, on the floor in the concert just crying out to God basically Lord give me strength give me give me the ability to do this um to live this life and everything and, and there's a song here called Sung a Song well, I said I said that part there because a lot of the fast songs like the flex the um, God flex or whatever those kind of songs seem out of place to me in a sense they, they seem like he threw them in for radio hits or just for you know you know get you a little bit a little bit of bump but really if he had his way he would just do a whole album of just crying out um that's just that's just me um, the song here called Son of, Son, Son of Sam, probably my favorite song on the album. Um, it's definitely, it does a better job of painting, than, it actually does a, the best job of painting the picture of where he was at the time when his son passed. Um, talks about um, getting the news and driving around and, and you know, just not know where he wanted to go. Talking about going to his cousin's house and getting drunk, getting high, just to ease the pain. And talking about just, you know, him and his wife, like, yo, where you at? I need you. He's like, yeah, I'm trying to take care of me right now. And just, he was very, very open, very, very vulnerable on that song. And I love that. I love the style of the production about it. Um, I think he did an amazing job on that song. But actually, my favorite song on the album. Uh, I've played that, played that back, 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 back. Uh, it's a dope, dope song. Um, because I love transparency. It's very transparent in this out that song there. It's very transparent, transparent in the whole album, but that song was very, very transparent. I just loved it, man. Um, but overall, I've, I've talked enough. Overall, um, I think it's a good album, man. As a believer, he's a believer, man. I feel we should support it. Support him. Buy the album. Stream it. What you got to do as long as you get a, do some check, get a check from it. Um, but, yeah, like I said, I'll say it again. I'll continue to say, if you're looking for a, a deep theological album, you're looking for something that's going to, I don't know, um, I think for the believer, like I said, for the believer, it's definitely going to encourage you. For the believer, it's going to have you, uh, uh, you know, arms raised and, and, and rejoicing in the beauty of the Lord. But for the unbeliever, you know, it, it'll probably just be a good song. It'll be an uh, encouraging song. Like, hey, it's going to be okay, but it's not going to lead you to Christ. Um, I think they, I think he failed on, on that aspect of it. But um, I think he did an overall good album, though. You know, but that's just my two cents on the situation. All right? All right, y'all. Grace.